The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upload unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Glory be to my Lord God Almighty, to the highest, and peace to be mankind for this earth. Who are upon this earth, who believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as its Savior. The power of Bible doctrine which teaches to us the true world message, or the Evangelistas, wherewith we learn many things, what is the true principle of Christ choosing us for his glory. That glory which, which is due unto him only when we execute by teaching through the church the manifold wisdom of God so that the principalities and the powers in the heaven could learn and know and understand. That when you have been brought close to Christ, to, to God the Father through Christ in his blood, and we can walk not to be disqualified, not to be get curse of divine judgment upon us, Neither we could be like the men, unlearned and unstable, getting destruction upon our own selves. To know the reality of the truth only through the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by being in fellowship of Him, through using the rebound of our privacy of our priesthood. And when we are in fellowship of Him, redeeming the time to walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, to yield unto the fruit of the Spirit, and to truly show forth the great glory of Jehovah in choosing us on this earth. The great many problems that we can face today in the church age is number one, your own flesh, ignorance. Ignorance to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. When Lord inspected the offerings given by Abel, Lord was happy to see his attitude. Lord was happy to see his concern. And Lord really accepted because he passed the Dokimazo test. Today, every day, whenever we pray, whenever we kneel down, whenever we write the word of the Lord upon our knees, either in the single or in the languages of the original scriptures, is Lord making us to pass when he is really inspecting us? And does the Lord really teach to us what is really lacking in us? The word of the Lord says in 1 Timothy 1, 19, to handle the word of the truth with pure consciousness and with unfeigned faith. You know, man should tell to you what are you exactly with a pure conscious or not? Or are you being poisoned by bitterness and bound in iniquity? for the sake of this world's lustful patterns. The greater things on this earth is most important, that is to glorify Him alone. The life that we live on this earth is worth living to glorify my Lord God Almighty to the maximum on this earth. In the system which we have been called as protocol, which has been designed for us, wherewith we can learn, we can understand, we can enjoy Bible doctrine. But we are not able to enjoy the word of the Lord. Because we are not able to cease to put to death, not partially or temporarily, but permanently, the all sin nature. The lustful patterns for lust of flesh, lust of eye, and pride of life. Though our Lord says in 1 Corinthians 6.13, The Lord is for the body and the body is for the Lord. We are not able to understand the truth in it. We are giving partially our body to this old sin nature, yielding the fruits of this old sin nature, which is nothing but death. Our Lord has not chosen us for that. He has chosen us to give maximum glorification through this body as long as we live along in this earth. So that we also could be the partakers, as our Lord says through Peter in 1 Peter 5. 
as I have been a partaker, the fellow laborers of elders. When I have gone through the sufferings like Christ, even I will be also revealed in His glory, what I have partaken in His glory as well. When Peter writes about the elders, the brother on assembly might have been happy to say, it is better to be elders and not pastor teachers. But when we come, the same Peter writes about the teaching of Apostle Paul in 2 Peter 3, 16 and 17, telling to the point, those who are unlearned and unstable will never come to the understanding of Apostle Paul's letter. Unlearned, not being taught under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, though they are good, renowned brother and man in the past like William Kelly. And many of the people fail to understand the one principal authority for the pastor teacher in the congregation today. Apostle Paul writes in the mystery doctrine of Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians, teaching about the importance of the pastor teacher in Colossians 1, 25 through following, telling to the point how a minister has to be. In Philippians 2, teaching to us how a minister has to be. And in Galatians, very specifically, our Lord says, if I were to please men, I wouldn't have been the bond slave of Christ. And in Ephesians, he tells, according to the gift of God given to me, I have been appointed. And Lord has made some apostles and prophets. They have done their work. And now we have the marvelous thing, the greatest miracle of all time, the completed canon of scripture in our hands. And through this, what we need to do, we need to teach the word of the Lord. We need to communicate the word of the truth. We need to enjoy Bible doctrine day by day, breath by breath, second by second. Because man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which comes from the mouth of Lord God Almighty. And man does not know the true freedom with responsibility until unless our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ set us free. And our Lord demands that even the minute thought or minute word or minute thinking that you have should be out of sin. If you are born to the sin, again you are not free, saith our Lord. And how can we be free? As a pastor teacher, you can be free only when you teach, exegete, isolate and categorize the word of the Lord. In Luke chapter 22, 36 and 37 verse we have, our Lord was teaching to them. And in the night time he went to abode in the Mount of Olives. Again he came back. Before he could come back early to the temple, early to the church, there were already people eagerly waiting early before Christ could come to hear his word. Not for miracles or healings or tongues, dear brethren. To hear his word he came. And the people came to learn doctrine from him. Today what for we are coming for Christ? Just for your lustful patterns to be fulfilled. The Lord doesn't care on it. He wants doctrine, 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 doctrine. He wants you all to learn the word of the Lord so that you could be truly free. Freedom with responsibility you can enjoy. Eleutheria, the great word ever written. And eulogia, the good speaking of my Lord. Concerning us. Lord doesn't need us, we need Him. Anthropomorphically, even if we could use the words which have been written for us, whichever it seems good for Him, He's going to do. And He teaches a lesson through Jeremiah in chapter 18, telling to the point, go to the potter and know whatever is divinely acquired, divinely right, that only I'm going to take. Apart from that, in your human wisdom, human knowledge, you cannot stand. The wisdom of this world, the wisdom of this princess, the wisdom of this power of this air is not worthy to stand. But I have taken only one thing, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in his wisdom to teach the truth, said the Apostle Paul in First Corinthians 2. That wisdom which we teach has to be bought for us from the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And to get the, from the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we need to be in the fellowship of Lord God Almighty forever. And if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God Almighty, you are going to lose it. And now you will come to know what you are losing because you are working out rejection, disqualify our documents, and at the same time curse of God upon you. And those who are unstable and unlearned, they are not only making for themselves losing this great reward, but rather they are destructing the plan of God. It's of a tough time, dear brethren. But Lord has always one thing common to tell to us for the pastor teachers. In the great house of God, there are vessels of honor and dishonor. But everyone can become a vessel of honor provided when he purges out 
from the vain babblings, lustful flesh, and stands firmly for the truth by rightly dividing the word of the law. Because we have been taken out from the fallen state, we believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, newly born. And the next what? We need to grow up. We need to take in Bible doctrine day by day. And as we grow up, we can take from milk, then bread, then meat. And then we can rightly discern what is right and what is wrong when the organ of sense has been developed in us. But dear brethren, we have much better things to teach, much better things to tell. Once again laying foundation, once again tilling the fallow ground. Aren't you ashamed? Lord hasn't has called you to be there. Lord has called you to yield the fruit. Not to be barren, not to be unfruitful. Therefore, in the dying declaration of Apostle Peter, he tells, As long as I'm in this tabernacle, I will never stop reminding you about this. And even after my departure, the things that I have written and kept, when you read it, when you can understand it by the modified gift of a pastor teacher, which has been taught for you to root and ground in love of Christ, then you can know what is to be fruitful rather than to be fruitless, rather than to be barren. This great fruit is our reward in Christ. You believe it, take it or not. How many days more you want to be barren? How many days more you want to be out? You consider. But remember, Abraham believed against hope. And in Revelation we find 1,44,000 Jews being saved. And Satan has a ministry against us day and night to proclaim. Though our sins are not known to the other men on this earth, but in the heaven it is an open scandal. But it is the grace for us to have our Lord as our propitiatory advocate. Paracletos, who throws the case telling that I have already paid for it. And everyone he, him, whom he loves, he scourges. Again, he chastens with love so that that guy should come back to the original plan of God. But we do not know the advocacy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, working for us day and night in the heaven. Though Satan gets railing accusations against us, our Lord defends like an advocate for us. But we never value and understand this principle in life. Still dying in sin by grieving and squelching and lying to the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Still looking upon that which is not right, which is not correct, which is not perfect. And going upon for those lives which is really not designed by God. Enjoying this life only for the sake of lustful patterns. And at the end, going back to answer to my Lord, at that time you will stand for the divine curse, divine judgment. The works that I have done in this flesh. Whether these works have to be taken out, how much of glory it is going to give. The difference between the winner believers and loser believers is the four blessings. And where will you stand tomorrow? Think over that. So, dear brother, and which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head board and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to tell you, Lord God, the Father, that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth is for very simple believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire to possess another truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the great man is to carry Sotan Lagan, herald the word in season out of season, because of the diamond to my witnesses, where it has been called. The number of to my witnesses in the infinity, for out of Bible in our hands, and number two are hearers. If there are no hearers, do not worry, dear brethren, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth. So which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for this great privilege that was given to fellowship through thy word. We pray to be strengthened more and more in thy word day by day, so that, Lord, the Lord might be glorified. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.